The Santa Clara Valley in the 1970s was a pretty groovy place to be. Full of promise and full of swimming pools who were full of amazing Olympians. But one of those Olympians was able to separate himself from the rest with a cutthroat determination to be the best. Mike Bruner would win gold at the 1976 Montreal Games and dominate the 1980 swim trials. But first, he had to separate himself from the deep talent pool in his own neighborhood. The South Bay was really the epicenter of swimming, not only in the United States, but in the world. In 1976, the year that Mike made his first Olympic team, eight of the 51 swimmers were from the Bay Area. Bruner relocated to the South Bay from the Central Valley to take advantage of the greater swimming possibilities. His coach soon realized that this was no normal pupil. From an ability point of view, he was really no better, no worse than most. But from the discipline and desire to be the best, there was nobody like him. There was no swimming personality quite like Bruner's either. With shagginess all around him throughout society, Bruner decided to go bald. And this was a time when swimmers usually liked to show that they swam by having green hair and it would look like straw. So here was this man with this very intimidating bald head. In the day, it was kind of a sacrifice. Certainly he didn't care what people thought of him or how he looked or anything of the sort. As the 1976 Olympics approached, Bruner's times decreased and his fame increased. His aim was to make the USA team in multiple events. A local reporter wanted to document the quest. I was in eighth grade and was assigned to write or create a magazine. So of course I decided I was going to do a swimming magazine and call it Splash. And my father said, so who are you going to interview? And I was very shy at the time, so I said, well, I'm just going to make up the interview. And my dad said, no, you're not. You're going to interview Mike Bruner. And in that interview, it was stated, how do you handle when things don't go well? And he had mentioned, I handled it in the fact that I get right back up and I do better the next time. At the Olympic trials, things did not go as planned. On the first night, Bruner failed to make the team in two events. The next day, Bruner even struggled to qualify for the finals in his best event, the 200-meter butterfly. Then, fate intervened. We came to the Olympic trials in Long Beach, and as it happened, we arrived the day after Mike had had a very disappointing finish in the 400 freestyle. He was in a sulky mood. Coach Rose saw us. I gave him the magazine. And I threw it at him. I said, bye, damn. You're going to read this to me and read your, your comment and you tell me if that's really you right now or not. And not only did he go from seventh or eighth, he ended up winning the entire event. And Mike says that interview is the reason he made the team. I'm not so sure. I think he would have made it anyway. In Montreal, on the first day of the games, Bruner made another major leap. breaks the world record, which uh, was held by Mark Spitz at the time. It was something that hadn't been broken in four years and was the first gold medal uh, of the Olympic Games for the U.S. in any sport. Bruner added one more 1976 gold medal in a relay that established another world record time. He continued to rule his events over the next few years as he pointed toward the Moscow Olympics. There was the sense that Mike would, was set up to really have a magnificent 1980 Olympics. Winning four or five gold medals was not out of the question. I think with number one in every distance race throughout the year, and then the bomb hit. 
And I have notified the Olympic Committee that with Soviet invading forces in Afghanistan, neither the American people nor I will support sending an Olympic team to Moscow. He ended up making the team in four different events. And with the times that he did at the trials, all of them would be medal winning. After many stellar college swimming achievements at Stanford, Bruner jumped out of the pool and into a signature Silicon Valley career. He also let his hair grow out. But his Olympian backstory will always be part of his resume. Bruner's mission was to one day join the South Bay's swimming elite. Tonight, as he enters the San Jose Sports Hall of Fame along so many other storied Olympians, mission accomplished. <laughs>